Okay, in this lesson, we are going to learn about potential divider rule applications. So this is the learning objective. We are going to learn about the variable potential divider, which is called potential meter. So some recap. In a circuit where the resistors are connected in series, the ratio of the potential difference of the resistors is equal to the ratio of the resistance value. In other words, the higher the resistance, the greater portion of the potential difference it will take. How do we make use of this? It's to control the potential difference. We can apply the potential divider rule to control the value of potential difference across a resistor. To illustrate this idea, we just take a length of a resistor wire, we use 100 centimeter long for simplicity's sake, and connect with a battery of 12 volts, for example. So you have a 100 centimeter wire, you just connect to a battery. Then we add two connecting wires to the end of the resistance wire. And the potential difference between these two wires are known as the output voltage. This setup is known as a potential meter. By changing the connection point along the resistance wire of the potential meter, we can actually change the output potential difference or the voltage. So you can make it smaller. So the potential difference is only this. Or you can make it bigger here. So this is the resulting potential difference. However, take note that maximum output voltage in this case, it's always limited by the power source EMF. In this case, this is the maximum output voltage it can go, and the output voltage will be just 12 volts. So the general idea is that if you want the voltage output to be 6 volts, we just move the connection point to roughly about the halfway mark. Or if you want your voltage output to be 3 volts, we move the connection point where the resistance length across the output is 25 cm. So over here, this length is 25 cm. Bear in mind that the entire thing is 100 cm. So we just place a connection point, you get a voltage output of 3 volts. Or if you want the voltage output to be 9 volts, we just move the connection point to where the resistance length across is 75 cm. So if you put this entire thing to be 75 cm long, then the output voltage will, instead of 3, will become 9. So how does this work? It's because the ratio of the resistance is changed when we slide along the connection points. So at the halfway mark, the resistance ratio between the top and the bottom is 1 to 1. Okay, so halfway mark, the length of the wire is equal, and we know that the resistance is actually dependent on the length of the wire, which in this case is the same for the top and the bottom. And by potential divider rule, the ratio of the potential difference is equal to the ratio of the resistance, which is also 1 to 1. So this has a ratio of 1 to 1. And since we know that the total is actually 12 volts, so we know that this will be 6 volts. This also be 6 volts. So this is V output will be 6 volts. Similarly, when we shift the connection point to the 25 centimeter mark, the ratio of the resistance of the top wire to the bottom wire will be 75 to 25. So of course, this one will be simplified is to 3 is to 1. So you have the ratio of 3 is to 1. And applying the potential divider rule again, uh, potential ratio of the potential difference equals to the ratio of the resistance which is 3 to 1 and you know that the entire thing is again 12 volts so by dividing into this 3 to 1 you find that this voltage will be equivalent to 3 and this one will be equals to 9 so again the ratio is 3 is to 1 okay instead of using potential meter to control the output potential difference Another way to do it is to use a variable resistance, which is a symbol like this, and this is also known as a real stat. A real stat is just a resistor that can change its resistance value, and in lab you should have seen some device that is looks like this. 
by sliding the top handle left or right, you can actually change the value of the resistance of the real set. You connect the real step with another fixed resistor in series with a power source. So you have a real step, let's say at the bottom, and then the fixed resistor that doesn't change its value, and again you connect to a power source. Similar to potentiometer, you just connect two connection points and you have an output voltage. In this case, the output voltage we connect is across the real step. If you need the output voltage to be larger, you don't have to remove the connection wire and move anywhere. You just change the real set value by increasing the resistance of the real set. As the resistance value has changed, the ratio between the real set and the fixed resistance also has changed. So in this case, the real set value has become bigger. Okay, so the, the ratio of it also becomes bigger. So the value of the output voltage is also changed and in this case also become bigger. Okay, right now we use a simulation to illustrate this idea. So we take a voltage voltmeter to find out the value. So you just connect here and connect here. Of course, there isn't any value over here, but we switch on the circuit. So right now the ratio is 1 to 1. So this is 12 volts. But if the below this resistance is a variable resistance, if you increase the value, notice that the voltage output has also increased. But however, depending on the ratio of the maximum resistance value of the real step for the fixed resistance, you get a maximum uh, output voltage that is uh, only a fraction of the EMF power source. So that means that even though I increase it to the maximum value of 180 ohms, the maximum voltage you will not get 12 volts, unlike the potentiometer. So you only get 11 because simply there is always a resistance on top. So this is different from the potentiometer where the maximum voltage output is the EMF of the power source. Uh, but opposite can help happens. If you reduce the resistance, you find that the voltage also reduces. And you can set the voltage to be zero uh, if your resistance over here is actually zero. Right now we'll see what's the effect if you connect a light bulb across it. Okay, if you have zero ohms, you find that in this case the output voltage is zero, the light bulb will not light up. But if you increase the resistance over here, the light bulb will become brighter. And if you increase the resistance even more, the light bulb will become even brighter and so on. So therefore you can actually control the brightness of the light bulb by changing the resistance of the uh, uh, real step. There's actually an alternate circuit setup. Alternatively, you can set up a circuit where the output voltage is right now across the fixed resistance. Notice that right now the fixed resistance is below and the real set is on top. Using the same idea, you can also change the output voltage by changing the real resistance of the real set. Okay, but take note that output voltage is uh, across the fixed resistance. Uh, however, take note in this case when they increase the resistance of the real set, the output voltage actually decreases. Okay, so it is the opposite. If you increase the real set, the, it actually causes the output voltage to decrease, as indicated in the diagram. So this becomes bigger, this one becomes smaller. Let's use another simulation to illustrate this idea. So let's come back to the simulation. Remember, right now the top is the one that you can change. So right now, if you increase the resistance, you notice that the light bulb becomes dimmer and you make it dimmer, okay, almost, it is almost quite dim, okay? But uh, if you reduce the resistance, you find that in this case, the light bulb will become brighter, okay? So that's the difference. But why do we want to do that? Right now, it's because in this case, you can make the output voltage to be the same as the uh, 12 volts. Okay, so let's just give a check. So if you put over here and over here, you know this, notice that the output voltage is zero when the resistance of real set here is zero. Okay, so that's all for today's lesson. Mm -hmm.
please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.